take a look at that, guys. I know you guys love Mexican black king steaks. Gotta be careful, I gotta be careful. Oh, there it is, there it is. There's the little baby in there. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. Do me a favor, go down in the comments right now and tell me how the start of your day is. And while you're down there, hit that like button for me. I really do appreciate it. As always, I'm gonna tell you, I hope the start of your day or evening or whatever it might be is absolutely incredible. You know, tomorrow, I actually have a special friend coming to visit. You guys may remember Chewy, my crazy snake bites guy and venom hunters, dude. He's coming for a visit, so it's gonna be absolutely epic. We also have a lot of snake work going on over the next few days as well as some travel coming up so that's going to be absolutely epic but you know I only have a couple clutches of python eggs in the incubator left so what do you say we head to the incubator really quick Okay, so I am here in the incubator, and as you can see, I only have one Sabu Python clutch, and I have one Ball Python clutch left, and then that is it, and the incubator is empty. I really hate when the incubator is empty, but that's just the way it goes. It won't be long before we're breeding snakes and getting eggs again. Regardless, this clutch is about to hatch with the Sabus, and I've showed you the adult Sabus before. They're kind of a grayish brown, really beautiful eyes, but as babies, they are stunning. They're like this nice red color, so I cannot wait till these things hatch out, but uh, Let's go ahead and cut the eggs and see what's inside of them. So there won't be any like surprises when it comes to what's in these eggs because there's no real morphs, at least unless I get extremely lucky. But the thing that's interesting is Savu pythons, much like children's and spotted pythons, hatch a little quicker than normal pythons. So normally with a ball python, you're gonna have about a 60 day incubation at 88 to 90 degrees. Reticulated pythons go a little bit longer, but Savu's, children's and spotted's typically go in the early 50s, like 52 to 54 days. So you can see with these eggs, right here. See how desiccated they are or dented they are? That basically just means that they're ready to hatch. So what happens when an egg first is laid and you put it in the incubation medium, basically what happens is they suck in the moisture. But then after they get past a certain amount, about the third part of their incubation, they start to expel water and they start to desiccate in. And that's when you know they're about ready to hatch. So what do you say we just jump in and see what these beauties look like? Oh, I'm so excited. Look at these little dudes. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, they're so delicate. Gotta be careful, I gotta be careful. Oh, there it is, there it is. There's the little baby in there. Oh my gosh, it is so absolutely cute. And you can kind of tell that there's like no real yolk left in there. So these baby snakes have absorbed all their yolk, meaning that they're ready to pip out any day. So I'm just giving a little helping hand by going ahead and cutting them. Let's keep going. Here we go, egg number two. Just want to make sure all these babies look good and are healthy and happy. Okay, this one looks really good too. Let's go ahead and cut this one here. So far, everything looks really healthy. Again, it's not as exciting because there's not more in it, but I'm just trying to make sure that they look good, there's no kinks, and everything looks really good. So I'm just gonna cut a couple more eggs really quick just to see what's inside to make sure that they're good. Like this one right here. Oh, let's see here. Peel that back. Oh, they look so pretty. And there you have it, okay. All right, so this clutch all looks really good. I mean, everything looks good. All the babies look good. Everything looks fantastic. So uh, again, you know, probably two or three days, these guys are gonna crawl out and they're really beautiful when they crawl out. Uh, look a lot different than the big adults. So this is really exciting. One last look at this clutch. And you can see these little babies in the egg here. Look at how cool they are. Oh, man, I cannot wait till these guys hatch. Oh, it's been a while since I've hatched Sabus. I've only hatched them one other time ever before, so this is gonna be super exciting for me. Regardless, let's head back to the shop. Okay, so I am back here at the shop and I wanna check on some colubrid eggs that have just hatched out. We don't have very many more clutches left, but babies are always awesome, so let's take a look and see what's hatched so far. Ooh, look, oh my gosh, look at this clutch here, guys. Look, at here's some scaleless Texas rats and take a look at this little monkey right here. Oh, doggy, that thing is absolutely gorgeous. And he's a feisty little dude, too. He loves it, just like all these scaleless Texas rats. And then look at this, look at this, look at this. This is actually those San Luis Potosis or Mac 
Max Max. Look at how gorgeous these ones are here. But look at this one here. Woohoo! That thing is crazy cool. This, of course, is a granite Max Max. We had a really good year with the granite Max Max this year, but look at how gorgeous they are in the variation. This would be more like a normal Max Max with a little bit of striping there, which is a little bit unusual. But look at the variance in this clutch. Oh my gosh, there is some gorgeous babies. I am so excited. I'm going to have to keep some of these for sure and raise them up for some future breeding stock. Moving on to the next clutch. What do we have here? Oh, oh look, at, look at the little baby head right there. Oh my gosh, you are so cute. And there's a little one down there. But these, of course, are little Mexican black king snakes. Take a look at that, guys. I know you guys love Mexican black king snakes, and I am so excited to have hatched a bunch of them this year. And of course, we have those black milk snakes, those gaijai, that I am so excited as they raise up, you guys are going to freak out because they look just like Mexican black kings, but they're like two foot longer and thicker. They are absolutely incredible. So there it goes. Some more Mexican black king snakes. And it looks like we have one or two more in the eggs, so they're not completely hatched out yet. Let's move on here. Let's see what we have. Ooh, look at this clutch. Look at this. Oh my gosh, look at these. These are all Texas rat snakes. But we have normal Texas rats. Oh no, these are actually aneurythristic Texas rat snakes here. And of course, these are those snow Texas rat snakes that I've told you guys about before that just kind of popped up in our collection that I don't even know where they came from. But it's awesome. And then of course, these pure white ones right here, these are the leucistic Texas rat snakes. Oh my gosh, this is a beautiful clutch of Texas rat snakes. And you know, Texas rat snakes are a little bit bitey when they're younger, but if you work with them, they're really cool. They eat really well, and they're just a really cool animal. And now that there's more and more color phases, it's getting really more and more excited. And you guys know that I love that scale of stuff because it's crazy. And you gotta remember that every time you have a new color like the snow, the aneurysmic, all those types of things, you can then breed them into the scaleless and get scaleless ones that are gonna make them absolutely incredible. Okay, so last clutch here, let's see what we have. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, there is a bunch of Pueblo milk snakes in there. Whoo, doggy, that is a swatch of Pueblo milk snakes for sure. And you know, we started the year hatching a ton of Pueblo milk snakes, and we kind of ended the year hatching a ton of Pueblo milk snakes. So that is absolutely incredible. And the reason we work with so many Pueblo milk snakes is just because they're so incredible. I mean, when you want a milk snake, they're kind of the perfect animal. They eat, they do well, they're super hardy, so they're just absolutely incredible, not to mention unbelievably gorgeous. Take a look at these guys. Oh my gosh, they are incredible. So anyways, that's about it for hatching colubrids. Uh, I am going to check in with Jessica and find out what's going on on the gecko front. It's been a while since we've done a little gecko time with Jessica, so I'm going to rendezvous with her and see what she has on the docket. What do you have for us today? Well, I found a lot of stuff actually that popped out that's cool. Oh, what the heck is that? Look at the little eyes on those little buggers. These oh, are these are the same? Glow. Yeah, they are clutch mates. So they're sun glow, bell, white, and yellows. Sun glow, bell, white, and yellows. Ooh. Wow, those things are awesome, yeah. man. Holy cow. And, and those eyes are just like piercing red. I mean, that is freaking awesome. Some radars, so some oh, bells, yeah, little so. radars. Oh, look at that. That's Getting cool. a lot of nice bells this year. Yeah, we've been working on the bell stuff quite a bit, or I should say Jessica is working on the bell stuff quite a bit because it's just really bright and really beautiful. So uh, that's awesome. Uh, ooh, what's this one? That's Look at it, it's like a little Dalmatian. That one is a snow white and yellow eclipse. A snow white and yellow eclipse. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. It's strange that it's so reduced. I mean, that yeah. thing is so cool. And obviously they both were had eclipse. Because he's right. Like, He's got the eclipse yeah. eyes. Oh, that's a nice animal right there. Oh my gosh, look at that bold stripe right there. I mean, that is really beautiful. And you did a lot with bold stripe stuff this year. Oh yeah, so hopefully uh, I'll keep reducing that and like getting getting the stripes better. out of it. These, I really like their patterns on them, but they're clutch mates. That's awesome, Jessica. As always, she just continues to blow my mind with the geckos. And listen, all of these are geckos here. All of these are geckos here. All of these are geckos are here. So it is turning into a gecko craziness. It's insanity right now here with geckos. <laughs> I know. Well, help us, please, buy some geckos because we're going gecko crazy. Uh, but that's all right. We're just locking Eric up over here in the corner. He's not oh, yeah. allowed to leave. I mean, he started working. He was working like eight hours, but now we keep him here 20 three and a half hours a day. We give them one half hour just to go in the bathroom and that's it. Yep. I'm out of bathroom tokens this week. If you get to see uh, no, a couple. No, nope, none, none. You keep working. All right. <laughs> Back to talking about scaleless Texas rat snakes. You know, it's not for everybody. I understand some people don't like the scaleless stuff for whatever reason. Uh, although I kind of think that, you know, these are all kind of designer snakes. You know, they, they don't need to live in the wild. And I totally get the fact that 
Snakes have scales for protection. I get it. And in the wild, they need those scales. In captivity, we're feeding them frozen thought. They don't necessarily need it. But I totally understand the argument, and I don't want to get into a philosophical debate over mutations, whether albinos or scaleless or whatever is worse than others. Let's leave that to somebody else because I like to keep things positive. Regardless, I want to show you guys a few scaleless animals that I just think are absolutely incredible. And again, that's the thing that's neat about, in particular, the scaleless Texas rats and the scaleless corn snakes. I mean, they're so polymorphic. You can get all kinds of different colors and phases. And these guys are actually just normal scaleless Texas rat snakes, just with different kind of polymorphic colorism. Look at how gorgeous and kind of soft that animal looks. I just think that that's absolutely incredible. But take a look at this one, which is actually a clutch mate. Look, oh, look at this feisty little monkey right here. But look, at you can hardly even see the pattern on this thing. I mean, it is just so brilliant. I mean, that thing is gorgeous and that's what's neat about these guys is when you start line breeding them for like really specific like colors like reds and oranges and yellows uh, you never know what you're gonna get each clutch comes out completely different and uh, it's, it's like Christmas every single day when you're hatching these guys let me show you a couple other things here quick look at this one I'm actually keeping this one here look at that animal just look at the contrast and cool pattern on it I mean that thing is absolutely incredible and uh, again I just when this thing had shot I was like oh my god that thing is cool almost looks like a hypo melanistic but this isn't from like a hypo line or anything like that so I think that just is absolutely cool and then another one that I've showed you guys in the past but I just think they're so cool especially as babies is of course the leucistic scale as Texas rat snakes. I mean, they're all wrinkly looking and kind of weird looking. I don't know. These are like little alien snakes. I just think they're absolutely cool. So regardless, you know, scaleless Texas rats are one of my favorites. I just think they're absolutely incredible. And I totally get the debate on whether they're good or bad. But in my opinion, whoa, what are you doing, you silly monkey? They are just absolutely incredible animals. And we've been keeping them for 10 or 12 years and never had any issues with their health whatsoever. So uh, super cool snakes. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here. Thank you guys for all your support. Do me a favor, go ahead in the comments and tell me what you'd like to see in some future vlogs. I mean, there's definitely going to be some travel and adventure. We have a lot of things planned, but I want to know what you guys want to see. I want to keep you engaged. I want to keep you incited. I want to just kind of entertain you guys, and I appreciate you guys so much. You guys have an absolutely incredible day for me. Can you do me a couple favors? Can you smash that like button, and can you hit that notification bell for me so you know when I upload a video, which is every day at 9 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to somebody, and I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.